Hello and welcome to some first responder goodness of the Benchmade variety. So what we have here today is the Benchmade 917BK Tactical Triage to give it its full name. Um, and I suppose that name should hint um, to exactly what the purpose of this knife is. So triage uh, is the assigning of degrees of urgency to injuries or illness, uh, basically to decide the order of treatment if you've got uh, numerous patients. So clearly defines what this knife's purpose is. So this knife is uh, one of Benchmade's black class, which they classify as the working class or, or hard use type um, knives. So as you can see from the design, I think you'll see me flip that open. It's not really a, des uh, a design for design's sake. It's not one of those beautifully designed knives, although it is handsome, uh, but it clearly is uh, form over, sorry, other way around. Uh, function over form type knives. So, as per usual, I'm going to go through materials dimensions and then we'll go a little bit more into the design and attributes of the knife. So, what we have here is a blade of CPM S30V, not a blade steel that we see too often anymore. Handle is G10. We've got a folding strap cutter that I'll show you just now. It doesn't specify anywhere that I've seen what steel that is, but one would make the assumption that it is the same steel as the blade steel. Although we know where assumption sometimes gets you. Um, liner is stainless steel. Big, heavy, thick uh, liners on this knife. We've got a glass breaker that is carbide. Uh, the backspacer is a polymer. And then the pivot is uh, phosphor bronze washers. Right, let's get that guy open and then go through the dimensions quickly. So, blade length 8.84 centimeters or 3.48 inches. Blade thickness of 3.15 millimeters or 0.12 inches. Handle thickness 3.97 millimeters or 0.55 inches. And then closed length for this knife is 12.32 millimeters or 4.85 inches. Overall length is 21.16, let's center that, 21.16 centimeters or 8.33 inches. And then weight, let's check the weight of this guy. Not a light knife, but again, not a knife that has been designed for lightness, but more for an intended function. Right. Let's have a quick look at that. Uh, let's get that nicely centered up. Uh, starting to become... There we go. Uh, and that is 5.2 ounces. Their stated weight was 5.28 ounces, so close. Um, and that in milliliters, uh, same as grams anyway, 148 grams. So as I said, not a light knife, but uh, I think certainly um, appropriate to the purpose of the knife. Right, let's go through a little bit of the design of the knife. We'll start with the blade. We've got a drop point blade. They describe it as a drop point blade, and I, and I suppose that is the most accurate description of that blade. Starting to sort of veer towards spear point, especially with that big swedge on the back and the general shape, uh, it is just starting to move towards that uh, sort of spear point shape. Flat grind. Nice edge on the on the knife, uh, sharp out of the box. Little nick on this one. You might pick it up as I'm turning the knife around, but that's no fault of Benchmade. That's obviously been bumped against something at some stage. But quite a plain uh, blade, but again, I think uh, fit for purpose. Right, let's speak about the handle. So we've got G10 scales, as I mentioned before. Quite a slick feel to it, and that's part of that... Uh, tactical type nature of the knife. A little bit of shaping around the edges just to improve the ergos. So we've got this beveled edge running along the back and front of the knife. And then good jimping on this knife. We've got thumb jimping at the top behind the blade there. We've got jimping in the front finger choil, jimping along the spacer at the back and a little bit down there. And I'll speak about that now when we look at that belt cutter. But in hand, the knife really does feel se secure uh, and the ergos are good. No hot spots or, uh, or anything like that. So while there's not much texture on this quite slick scale, that jimping all around when you get it and you grab it, it is, uh, you get good purchase on this knife. 
Uh, right, let's close the blade and then have a look at that uh, belt cutter. So you can obviously see the thumb studs uh, for opening the blade there and then halfway down the handle on the one side, uh, a little bit halfway, two thirds down, you'll see another little stud and that stud is to open that belt cutter. That belt cutter, by the way, is a little fidget toy in itself. Yes, I know, it's not the same toy, but it's, uh, it just has a really smooth and good feel to it. So it doesn't lock open, but you can hear it positively clicks into place. Uh, and then the same, the detent, when you close it, you'll hear it clicks into place. So it's not going to open accidentally. You really do need to purposely open this. And then we've got a little bit of jimping on that little portion of the belt cutter and the ergos you can see this is really well thought through because when you grab the knife if you're going to use it this way around your forefinger gets into that jimping and then that little jimping in that cutaway at the back of the handle your thumb falls nicely into place here so again you get a secure grip on the the knife if you want to make use of that belt cutter and then if you need to use it the other way around, the same happens. So now your thumb falls into that jimping and your forefinger there. So really is very, very well thought through. And I mentioned that it doesn't lock, the, the belt cutter doesn't lock into place. But either way, when you get hold of it, your finger will prevent that from, from closing. You know, in case it hooks on something in you getting it into position. But the same thing there, your finger will keep it open when it's in use. And then we've got the glass breaker. Um, never advise somebody to use a glass breaker on a knife unless you're wearing thick protective gloves and you've got protection over your eyes. But it is there. It's a little bit of a blunt force, I suppose, defense tool. Blunt in inverted commas. That's quite sharp. Um, and then in extreme emergencies, I suppose, if you've got nothing else and you have to get through a window, you can use uh, the glass breaker um, the back there. Good. Um, what else do I need to go through? So uh, it is uh, access lock, uh, so the, the Benchmade's typical access lock, which again is a great fidget toy, and I know it's especially in a knife like this, not designed for it, but it, it is a strong lock. Um, and then the action on those phosphor bronze washers is really good. Uh, the knife is in typical Benchmade fashion, is incredibly smooth. And then, you know, the fidget factor is, you know, you pull back on those tabs and you can flick the knife open and close like that and you know when you get the timing right on that that is uh, <laughs> intoxicating very satisfying uh yeah pocket clip we got tip up stainless steel pocket clip tip up and reversible uh, that you would expect on a working class uh, type knife working class as in the black class of uh, benchmade um and i think that pretty much covers everything on the knife. Oh, what I did want to mention, so, yeah, obviously a heavy knife, but you can see that they have, they have made an attempt, they have tried to lighten the knife as much as they can. So if the light's catching that now, you can see on those thick stainless steel slides, there has been some material removable, uh, removable, removal there. And on the belt cutter side, obviously they couldn't remove as much, but there's a little bit, let's just try and get the right angle there, a little bit removed over there as well, um, and then more on the other side. So, so they have attempted to, um, to make the knife a little bit lighter, but then again, the, the overall nature of the knife, uh, it is quite heavy, the build of the knife, it is quite heavy, but um, uh, fit for purpose. Um, I think I've pretty much gone through everything on this knife um, short of saying that there are a few versions of the knife so you do get now looking on benchmade site i didn't see this one with the plain edge anymore they do still have the one with the serrated edge so it, it appears that this one might be discontinued and you still get the one with the serrated edge but Nevertheless, there's, uh, avail and I'm sure they're still available. I've seen them online at various places that um, this knife is still available. Uh, but you get a serrated edge version of this, and then you get one that has the uh, satin blade. Uh, so uh, instead of the coated blade. Um, and I think now I have a quick glance at the notes. I think I've covered everything on the knife. 
Oh, there is one little negative on this specific knife uh, I did notice and um, I, I, you know I do get irritated with this especially when it's uh, you know a good reputable company but it's not massively off but if you look at that that blade centering is not spot on um, you know I just always wonder why some knife manufacturers seem to always get it right and some seem to get it wrong every now and again. And I've seen a few Benchmades where blade centering is um, a little off. Um, and it, yeah, if, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna call your brand, if you're gonna call it uh, Benchmade, then you know, I suppose it, it better have the stand, standards of something made, as the name suggests, uh, on the bench, hands on, so, just saying. But, but look, a, a great knife, it feels good in hand, it seems very well, well uh, designed for its purpose, um, and, and I think as a first responders uh, type knife, uh, I think a, a, good, a good choice. Guys, I think that is it, I think I've pretty much covered now everything on the knife. Uh, let's get that open and lay them down there, let's show you a little shot of the show side. Uh, so yeah, tidy looking knife and um, and clearly well designed for its intended use. Let's put that down that side. Right, um, I almost forgot, uh, size comparisons. So again, let me use the knives that I've always been using. So this is the um, <laughs> Spyderco Manix 2. So you can see the uh, 917 BK Tactical Triage, not a small knife, but again, it shouldn't be for its intended purpose. Uh, let's get that level. So that's against the Spyderco Manix 2. Uh, and then I've got the Medford Slim Midi Marauder. A little bit longer than the Midi Marauder. And certainly, yeah, a little bit. A little bit heavier than the Midi Marauder. Um, right, there's that. And uh, then the other knife that I've been using, uh, and I'm going to say it again simply because it's been around for so long and I think so many people know it, but uh, a knife from the same family, and that's the Benchmade Mini Barrage, give you a sense of that as well. There we go. Uh, right now, I think I have covered everything short of, again, saying uh, my, uh, giving my appreciation to Blades and Triggers, um, another knife from them for me to have a look at mess around with for a few days and form an opinion on it really do appreciate their support of the channel guys uh, again thanks so much for joining me i really do appreciate you um, sharing your time with me and i would equally appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can be notified every time i uh, release a new video because i would love you to join me more often other than that you go well and god bless